I was joined by DTN analyst Todd Holtman on Tuesday. We talked late corn pollination, wheat harvest, and the South American markets. But I started off by asking if the stable forecast we've been seeing is reflected in the stability in the markets. It's certainly uh, a much easier forecast for crops than the almost triple digits that we saw a week ago. So that bit of threat, especially as corn gets closer to pollination, um, it is, uh, has subsided for now. So that's one thing the market doesn't have to worry about. Uh, what the market is still worrying about, however, is that we don't have a real solid planning estimate yet for corn or soybeans. And uh, we're just going to have to wait a few weeks until we get to that August 12 uh, WASD date from USDA to see a second survey. Yeah, and that kind of leads into this next question. What do you think is going to be the big story as we head into August? Is it going to be that corn pollination or uh, more tracking the weather or acreage reporting, something else? What do you think? You know, uh, all of the above, but I have to say for my money right now, I think the planning estimate is going to be uh, a really big deal. It's just something that we have not nailed down yet uh, this year, and that's uh, very unusual for uh, here, as here we are in late July, not to have a, a credible planning estimate yet. Um, you know, it's typically hard enough this time of year trying to predict a crop size when you're just trying to guess one variable of yield. But when you have two variables up in the air, meaning acres and yield, it's just almost impossible for the market to come up with uh, uh, any kind of a narrowing uh, estimate for, for what the crop size could be. So it's, it's uh, it, uh, a lot of extra uncertainty this time of year that we don't normally see. And I think the August 12th planning estimate will do a lot uh, to help move us forward in that regard. What do you think is going to be the timeline as to when you think we could see a concrete number on prevent plant acres? Uh, well, uh, the first estimate of that will also come out August 12th, as I understand. And um, uh, as an analyst, I have to say, I know there's a lot of talk about prevented planting acres, and that is an important part of the mix. But even if I knew the prevented planted acres today, we still wouldn't exactly know what the starting base number is. So uh, we're really not going to be helped until we get uh, an actual estimate of acres planted. And that's what we're looking for on the 12th. And also, Todd, interesting year for wheat. So harvest in Nebraska should be around uh, upper 70s, nearing that 80% range. But as we're recording this, current harvest less than half that. What's the market outlook here? Um, overall, Overall, uh, you know, the outlook for wheat is so uh, predicated upon what is happening in the world as far as the world wheat crop. And overall, the world's wheat crop still looks good, or I should say good enough. There are some uh, limited weather threats uh, around the globe, but we haven't seen any serious threat to production yet. And so as long as uh, USDA and, and the International Grains Council both are estimating uh, record world wheat crops in 2019, it's just hard to imagine uh, much higher wheat prices. Now having said that, I will say there is one little asterisk, and that is wheat is heavily influenced by the corn price here in the U.S. So uh, if we do end up having some kind of a bullish situation in corn, that would have a wheat influence, but that's about its only hope this year. And looking at things down in South America, and there's been so much going on locally, it's easy to forget that it's harvest time for them. So what updates can you share for us in South America? Well, overall, I think uh, we're all reasonably assured that South America had, has had much better crops this year. And especially in the case of corn, Brazil's looking at a record corn crop this year. And, uh, you know, it was just one year ago, they suffered dry weather and Australia, or Argentina was in drought. Well, uh, that's almost flipped uh, opposite this year. They have much bigger crops, and both Brazil and Argentina together are probably going to export maybe almost 900 million bushels of corn more this year than they did one season ago. So that is a much uh, more competitive demand situation that our U.S. corn crop will face in the year ahead. And what are we hearing from China? Seems like the two biggest stories would still have to be news on the trade front and ASF. Yes, uh, in regard to ASF, that is one disease that's not slowing down yet. It continues to spread. It seems like every week or two, uh, we hear about new cases or uh, new situations identified. There's even been talk of uh, uh, 
situations cropping up in Europe, which I think makes uh, a lot of uh, people nervous about pork production, where Europe is a big pro pork producer. And uh, as far as in Asia goes, it doesn't seem like that's slowing down either. It continues to spread throughout Southeast Asia. So there continues to be a uh, concern about grain demand uh, related to ASF. But in the bigger picture, I don't know that we've seen a big slowdown in grain demand. And of course, here in the US, uh, there may be a little bit of benefit uh, to increase pork exports this year. Not, uh, not as enthusiastic maybe as the market thought in March or April, but uh, some benefit indeed. And Todd, I'll end it today by asking if you have any uh, advice regarding uh, marketing or risk management tips for our viewers watching. What do we need to know? Yes, well, uh, typically, Troy, the seasonal peaks that we try to sell corn are uh, early June uh, for corn and early July for soybeans. We're past those seasonal peaks, but because this is such an unusual year, uh, the corn price is still offering a, a pretty decent uh, opportunity with the December contract around 430. That's, uh, I think, still a very valid hedge opportunity. Uh, just you know, not knowing how uh, prices are going to turn out for the rest, uh, the remaining 50% of the crop yet. But uh, that continues to be a good opportunity as we get closer to August.